guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're doing a theory video as opposed to a problem video, and we're going to learn a better way of understanding the first law of thermodynamics. Generally, when you first learn the law, you're explained that this is a mathematical formula for the law, right? So the delta U, the change in internal energy, has to be equal to the heat plus or minus the work. And I do the plus or minus because depending where you are in the world, it's going to be plus or minus. We're going to tackle all those things along this video, all right? Um, if this video ends up becoming too long, I might break it down. But the idea is that after watching this, you're going to be very confident on A, what the first law of thermodynamics means, and B, how to use it and apply it into problem solving. What is the problem today? Students learn this, and it's a simple enough equation, yet the meaning of it is sometimes not quite understood. So when you're doing some problems, you can find the numbers, but you're not so sure how to relate these numbers to um, answer the question or to explain what's happening in the system, right? So I'm gonna use these little drawings here that I have. This is just a, a piston system cylinder. Uh, sorry, a piston cylinder that can move freely up and down. And the idea is that we have a fluid inside and this fluid, if it expands, it's going to push the piston upwards, therefore increasing its volume. If it is being compressed, it's going up, sorry, if it's being compressed, then the piston can move downwards and therefore we decrease the volume, right? That's the idea. We're going to just use this little drawing to be able to find ourselves. What I want to do in this video is go over all the possible options and possibilities that any system can have. And by doing so, hopefully, you'll be able to see the simplicity of the first law of thermodynamics and that there are only so many options available in a system or a problem, okay? First things first, what is this law saying? Well, it's saying that the change in internal energy, whether it's increasing the internal energy, decreasing or staying the same, has to be equal to the heat that's being given to the system or removed from the system, the system being my fluid here, right? So either heat that's going into my system or heat that's going away from my system, plus or minus the work being done either by the system or to the system, okay? What are, let's start with the simple options. Well, the other way of understanding this, the way that I prefer of understanding this law is that you cannot create or destroy any energy, right? If you have, you know, if you're decreasing your internal energy, then that needs to be leaving either in the form of heat or in the form of work. Likewise, if I am uh, somehow producing heat, right, this heat needs to be coming, if I'm, my system is um, giving away heat, it's either coming from a change in work or a change in internal energy and so on and so forth, right? So that's a way that I like to think about the first law. Uh, now let's think about some possibilities, right? Some examples and possibilities of the application of the first law and how to interpret them. First thing is, what if we have a system that has no change in volume? As you guys know, the definition of work, right, the definition of work is the integral of pressure difference in volume as we go from volume one to volume two. And another way of definitions for three here, another way equivalent to this is, equivalent to this is the integral of a force over a certain distance as we go from distance uh, spot one to spot two, right? So if we think about it, if there's no change in volume whatsoever, right? So if my, so let's write it long. So if my delta V difference in volume is nil or zero, then work will be nil or zero, right? So therefore, that means that our law becomes, simply put, the difference in internal energy has to be equal to the heat, right? What does that mean? Well, as simple as this. Let's see if I can grab my drawing again. Here it is. Let me these guys. Well, as simple as this. If I have my, let's put my internal energy here in the graph, and I don't need the exact axis. If my state one, state one, is over here, and my state two has a higher state of energy, right? In other words, if U2 is higher than U1, then I must have received heat, right? This has to have happened, right? So as we go from state one to state two, we must have um, heat going into our system. That's what the first law is telling us. Likewise, if for any reason our state 
one is a higher state of energy, so that is our U1 is higher than our U2, then heat must be leaving our system, right? There's no other option. And we can turn this around, right? If we happen to know that heat is entering my system, right? If I happen to know that heat is entering my system, then I know that my U2 will be greater than U1. There's no other option, right? Mm, the other way around, if I know that heat is leaving my system, well, then I'm, I'm sure that U2 is smaller than U1, right? So that's the first, the first, the first couple of possibilities, right? Next up, what if, what if my system is well isolated, right? So we have a good insulation, and therefore no heat can enter or leave the system, and often the problems actually say that, right? So what's what's the case in that in that scenario? Well, let me grab my drawing here. Let me grab my. Okay, so let me grab my drawing here quickly. Let's copy this. All right. So what if? Let's put it down here. What if? my heat equals zero. Well, in that case, my first law becomes delta U will be equal to work, right? The change in delta U has to be due to work. Now let's understand this a bit better. Well, what are, what are the possibilities of work? If I have, remember that when I have a molecule, or when I have a fluid, when I have several molecules of that fluid inside a certain volume, and these guys are bouncing off each other and bouncing against the walls of our container, of our reservoir, right? So if I, and remember that this pressure, right, this pressure is actually being exerted into all the walls, right? So for this piston to remain where it is, we need to have the pressure, that's the external pressure, equal to the internal pressure, right? Now, if I want this guy to expand in volume, if, that is, if I want this piston to rise, so that now I have more volume. What I need is for this pressure to increase so that it's greater than the external one, and then this piston can go upwards, right? And remember that, where is our definition of, here it is, right? If we have a pressure or a force, right? If we're changing our volume, there we have work, right? So know that if I need to exert a certain pressure here to be able to push this piston upwards, and that incurs in my volume expanding, I need energy to do that, right? I need energy, right? Energy, again, energy is defined as force over a certain distance as we go from one to two. And what we're doing here is we're going from one, this is my state one, to two, and I'm using a certain force, which is related to my internal pressure. So therefore, every single time that I increase in volume, I need to use energy from the fluid, right? And the other way around is also true. Every time that the fluid is compressed, I'm giving energy to my fluid. It's always going to be that case, right? Always going to be that way. Now, what about the positive and the negative here? How do I make sense of this? Well, again, depending where you are in the world, this may, the convention may change. But regardless of where you are, as long as you understand whether the fluid is gaining or losing energy, that is, whether the fluid is doing work or work is being done to the fluid, you're going to be fine, right? Because this, this positive and negative are generally used to, to exactly explain whether it's being done by the system or received by the system. And if you can write that down in words, no matter where you are, I'm sure I can guarantee that your professor will give you a correct as your answer, right? So let's think about this. Okay, so as an example, if we have our internal energy here, and our state one is lower than our state two, energy-wise, right? So that means our internal energy is increasing. Then I can be sure that work is being done to my system, right? Work is being done to my system. So therefore, I can be sure that the volume is decreasing, right? 100% sure the volume is decreasing in this case. Why is that? Well, for my internal energy to increase, I either need heat or work, because there's no heat in our case here in our system, then work is being done to my system. For work to be done to my system, I need the pressure external to be greater than internal, therefore my volume is going to be decreasing. That's, you know, 100% the case. So let's say my delta U, that is U2 minus U1, is positive, so therefore my uh, work is being done to my system, okay? 
Beautiful. What about, what's the other option? Well, the other way around, right? So what if we have, I'll just tell you just you, my state one over here, and then my state two is a lower state of energy. And then for this to happen, well, I need to be sending this energy somewhere. It's leaving the form of work. So therefore, I can be sure that we have an expansion happening, right? The energy is coming from the molecules themselves. It's exactly the case that I explained here. These molecules themselves are using up their energy to be able to push this upwards. And as they push upwards, they're um, spending, put it that way, quote unquote, um, spending their energy in the form of work to be able to expand. So therefore, I can be sure that the volume here will be greater. Right? Volume of state two will be greater than volume of state one. Okay, so in this case here, my delta u is smaller, but it's greater than zero, right? U2 is uh, smaller than zero. Smaller than zero, u2 is smaller than u1. So therefore, work is being done by my system. Okay, so that's option number four out of all the ones we looked so far. All right, so we looked at when this guy is when work is zero, so therefore this guy has to be either heat increasing my internal energy or heat going away decreasing my internal energy. And now we looked and we have an insulated system in which work is responsible for doing both. Okay, what if my, um, what if it's the other way around? Well, same thing applies to when we're looking at the heat, right? If we have, what, we can, I can, what I can do here, for instance, is I can remove, um, I can remove this, right? And then if you know, okay, work is being done to my system, then absolutely I can be sure that the first state is smaller than the second state. The internal energy that is, right? The internal energy is less in the first state than the second state, right? If my system is expanding and there's no heat involved in this equation, then therefore I can be sure that my internal energy is increasing. Okay, so it works both ways. And then we get into the option in which we have all of them. Oh, actually, there's one more, right? There's one more. If we have our, if my internal energy, my change in internal energy is no. What about that case? Well, in that case, obviously, Q and work will be the same in magnitude. And this is not for a fetch, right? This is actually what happens in all the cycles. And all the cycles in, you know, Rankine cycle, uh, Braden cycle, diesel cycle, auto cycle, all the engines, that's the idea because we actually go around all the way so that when we come back, we're on the same state, thermodynamic state. So therefore, you uh, initial and you final are the same and delta U is zero. So therefore, Q has to be equal to work. So what does that mean in practice? Well, let's get our drawings again. No, not this one. These guys here. And this guy here. Well, what does it mean in practice? Well, if I have heat going in, if I have heat going in, what needs to happen? Well, if I have heat going in and it needs to become work somehow, then I can be sure that this guy here needs to what? Needs to expand, right? It needs to take that energy that's being received in the form of heat, Right? The energy is going into these molecules, and it is, needs to use it. And when it uses it, it pushes the piston upwards, and then it increases in volume. Right? So therefore, it's not increasing its internal energy. It's simply changing its volume. And the other way around is also true. If I have a system, like so, and I'm removing heat from the system, so heat is going away from my system, <laughs> then that means that for heat to go away from my system, that means that I need to be compressing my fluid. Like so. Okay, so all these guys, they have some energy, and this energy is what's pushing upwards and in equilibrium with what's pushing downwards. But if I'm removing energy from these guys here, then they don't have enough energy to be able to keep up with this external pressure, so therefore this pressure goes inwards and we have 
a decrease in volume in our system. Okay, those are the two options. The other way around is also true. If I have this guy here, this guy here, okay, and I tell you, oh, okay, um, from here to here, what I'm doing is I am increasing in volume, this guy here, yet my internal energy is not changing, okay? For this to happen, well, for them to be, be able to increase in volume, I need some energy somehow. If I can't get energy from delta U, then this has to mean that heat is going in. Okay, other way around. Well, we start here, let's do this. We start here. Okay, come on, come on, I'm doing this. There you go. All right, so we start with a greater volume, and then I tell you, oh, okay, we're going from a greater volume into a smaller volume. Yet, my delta U did not change whatsoever. So I can, I can tell you for sure, well, if I am decreasing in volume, that means that I have some energy being applied to my system, right? If, my, if there's some energy being applied to my system, yet it cannot increase its internal energy, like these guys here inside cannot increase the internal energy, then whatever energy is being applied to my system, it has to be leaving in the form of heat. That's the, all the possibilities in the realm of when my delta U equals nil, equals zero. Okay.